I think it's a likely scenario. Uh, like uh, uh, Jean-Claude Juncker, I believe that the odds of a deal between uh, uh, EU and UK are high. Uh, and it's fairly easy to get a deal in kicking the can down uh, the road on a few issues that won't be settled now. So deal with EU, yes. The problem, as you say, is that it's not a negotiation between EU and UK. It's a negotiation between UK and UK. Yeah. And that's the part of the negotiation which is unclear. That's the part of the negotiation which might not unfold. So the, the odds of getting a deal with EU is 90%. The odds of getting it through the House mm. of Commons is probably around 50%. Now, the question then is, what if there is a deal with the EU and it doesn't pass uh, in the House? What sort of uh, transition, prolongation, spasm uh, does this create? It being understood that uh, the question to be solved remained the same as it was two years ago. How can you exit the EU politically without exiting the EU economically? So can we ask that's, you about that's the, the, the worst issue. case scenario then? If there is no negotiation, there's no transition, it is a hard Brexit, uh, hard Brexit and the UK is forced to rely on WTO rules. How much of a disaster would it be for this country to rely on those WTO rules that you had a hand in creating? No. There, are, there are degrees in disasters. There are small disasters, medium disasters and big disasters. Now, exiting the internal market is anyhow a sort of disaster. Building the internal market was good, exiting the internal market is bad, and it has an economic cost. And the only issue is whether it's a small, medium, or big disaster, and that depends on the thickness of the border. And when I have to explain Brexit to kids at school, what I say is, look, there's UK, there's EU, there's no border for the moment. We have to put a border, and the issue is how thick is the border. If it's a thick border, you really exit but it's very costly. If you want to reduce the cost, you take a thin border, but you don't really exit. You know, what, what people here call Brino, Brexit in name only. My guess, my view is that this is going to be the end of this issue. It's going to be Brino. Exiting politically as much as possible and economically as little as possible because of the cost. When and how do you get there? Which sort of stage, spasm, debate, crisis do we have in between now and this Brino result is the only remaining question in my view. And that's, that's tough because it also leaves aside things that should be very easily settled. I mean, things like cooperation in security matters, police, uh, cyber, crime, whatever. This is a no-brainer. The notion that UK universities and academics will remain in the European research area is a total no-brainer. So these things which are easy, which need to be done, for the moment are waiting for Theresa May to find the necessary compromise, and this will take time. Just before we let you go, I can ask you quickly about how political trade has now become. We've just discussed two very big issues, the US trading relationship and now Brexit. But you've also called for a change to some of the rules and a rethink of WTO. What sort of changes would you make in this political environment when trade is such a, a big ticket item and domestic politics is so entwined now in global trading? What changes would you actually make? I think, uh, I think the changes that need to take place are one, at domestic level, improve your social systems so that... So the, spend more money. So that or, or change regulation, or change your labor market regulation. It's not always about money, but it probably is about, for instance, investing much more in education, in training. And, and that probably means money or better use of money. So there is this huge domestic part which has generated this backlash against globalization, against trade opening, although, although mostly by the US for the moment. And then you've got to fix a number of international issues and re-level the playing field between emerging countries and more traditional industrialized countries. And fixing this, you know, this old problem we have 
notably in WTO, that WTO knows about developed economies on the one side and developing economies on the other side. You are either on the one side or the other. Now, this is wrong. Uh, is, is China a rich country with many poor? Or a po poor country with many rich is an issue which diplomats can discuss like the sex of angels for ages. The reality is that we need to relevel the playing field. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.